Traders, Raggy here. Welcome to Charts and Coffee. Got the uh, Viking mug going today for the day after the FOMC. Good to see everybody. Happy Thursday, everybody. All right. So I do want to go over a couple things before we dive into the questions. And this has a lot to do with actually something that on the surface might seem a little boring, but is going to give you an edge that frankly, you're not going to get if you don't look at this particular data. This is a very cool link from the good folks at the CME. So if you Google CME FedWatch tool, you've probably seen me use this many times over the years. This is a fantastic, helpful countdown to the FOMC, 48 days, right down to the second. And if you take a look, you know, there's a lot of chatter about whether or not there was going to be a hike in January. So I'm going to just put it out there because you all come here sometimes for salty Roggy, but definitely for straight shooting Roggy. That was just categorically stupid. There was no, other than the chatter that happens in financial media, nowhere in the world of the real was that actually something that was probable, even truly likely. And this is where the discussion about what the Fed's going to do and a rate of change, meaning trend evidence, makes a huge difference. So you can kind of zone out the nonsense that you're going to hear and, and not even listen to me. Just take a look, take a look and trade what you see. So we go to March. Absolutely. Uh, now, what you're going to hear now, because, of course, financial media is what? Well, clearly full of people who have things better to do than study their charts because, you know, <laughs> but what are you going to have? They've got to talk about something, right? The hosts have to talk about something. So now you're going to hear a lot about a 50 basis point or half point hike. Yeah, exactly. Clear, clearly I'm salty this morning. All right. That is right there. That tiny little column. That's the suggestion of a half point hike. And you can quantify it. 16.3%. 83.8% is, and this will this will change, of course, with GDP, with jobs data, with every time one of the chuckleheads, FOMC chuckleheads speak, with inflation data. We know this is going to change with those major macroeconomic pillars, jobs, growth, inflation. So right now, this is how March looks, All right? This is really, really accurate, okay? This is really accurate. It's completely objective in terms of where we're getting the information from, and that is the Fed Fund Futures contract. Now, where things get a little interesting, because March is really not that interesting. It's been suggested we're going to see the quarter point hike. It's still largely baked in. And when we say baked in, this is not unknown to the market. I don't think that the bulk of the discounting in any way is going to be surprised uh, if we see that quarter point hike in March. We're expecting it it's discounted into price. Where this gets fuzzy is when we get out into May. Now, yesterday, this was this was actually really significant. May as a hold, which is the column of 25 to 50, and May as a hike were almost even right around 40-ish percent. You can see what's happened. So quarter point hike in March, quarter point hike in May, and that's where this 50 to 75 column is now in play. Again, these move according to the Fed Fund Futures. But believe me, gang, don't listen to the chatter on, on television or wherever it, you're getting the chatter from. Just look at the Fed Fund Futures and determine for yourself objectively what this particular contract is saying. Again, knowing that historically it's been remarkably accurate. So when people start talking about 50 basis point hikes and holds and everything else, you can very objectively go here. So I really wanted to spend a moment to walk you all through that because just some of the, the speculation and chatter is, gosh, it's ridiculous. And I don't want you all 
kind of having to discount things that really are not truly part of the narrative. All right. So that's it for Professor Raggi. Let's jump into your questions. That's exactly what this show is all about. Let's get into it. All right. Um, good morning. I noticed that your videos that you mentioned the JT trends are free, but I couldn't find it. Do you know where I would look to get it? So Zendi, thank you. There's a number of tools that I make free at the Countdown Trader. That's the automated support and resistance of Darvis 2.0, propulsion, wave, and grab candles. These are free, but I put them in the membership room drive. So if you're not a member of Simpler Trading, you can absolutely head on over to Countdown Trader and get most of what you see on my chart. You can even set up with my specific uh, settings, the slow stochastic here. That's built right into TOSS. You can do this on TradeStation, TOSS. You can do this on TradingView. The, the trade flags, which are these doohickeys right here, these are in the member drive. So right now, this is in the Sector Secrets Mastery. And, and I will say, and, and kind of unapologetically, I have always given a lot of indicators out for free and will continue to do so uh, to members and non-members alike. But frankly, there are things that I say for the members. And once they're a member of my mastery, then I like to give them, well, even more as, as a thank you. So the trade flags are, are for, for members, but everything else, wave, grab, automated support and resistance. My gosh, how much more awesome can automated support and resistance be? And then my settings on the stochastics and the propulsion are all available free at countdowntrader.com. All right. Thank you for the question. I do appreciate it. Uh, and I always want to be, you know, I always want to be frank and straight up with you all where things are and, and what's available and not. So I do appreciate the question. All right, Megazar, I was wondering if you gave precedence to the V-score over a slow stow on a daily or intraday time frame for CHOP. Awesome question. So if I'm looking at a V-score, which is just something that I cooked up out of just straight up desperation in 2008, when I was trying to rebuild my portfolio after, quite frankly, getting a little too close to the news. And, and I had friends on Wall Street that were kind of telling me what was going on uh, that they knew. Right. Not not, you know, just and I kind of got caught up in the narrative. And and I had at that time five portfolios, three of them. I went into cash. I will never do that again. Dumbest thing I ever did. I will never do that again. That being said, when I was rebuilding the portfolio, I knew I had to coattail size. I have to coattail volume. I don't want to be, you know, in my trade by myself. We never want to be in a trade first and by ourselves. I know that seems sexy, but we don't. We actually want to make sure that our idea is the same that a lot of other people are thinking. And that's the reason something moves in our favor. All right. Having said that, that's where V-score came in. I have to sneeze. Hang on one sec. I try not to sneeze in the camera. <laughs> All right. So V-score is a volume derived tool. Slow stochastic is a price derived tool. So it doesn't have to be one over the other, right? It does not have to be one over the other. Uh, but really, if they're both in play, awesome. If one or other is in play, think of it as how many of you have read it's a great book. I absolutely recommend it. I've actually got a couple copies of it on my bookshelf. I like to give it away. It's called, it's by Atul Gawande and it's called The Checklist Manifesto. Do check that out. It's a short read. You can read it over the weekend. It's absolutely going to change your trading. It's not a trading book. Some of the best books on trading are not trading books at all. So think of it as a checklist. V-score, check or not check. Uh, slow stochastic, check or not check. Maybe there's a Darvis level. Check or not check. Make sure the environment's right. You see what I'm saying? So the more check boxes we can have, the better, but it doesn't have to be. So I don't know that one is better than the other, uh, but I would say that in the first 30 minutes of the morning after the bell into 10 a.m., which is known as the clearing period, I'll rely more on volatility and volume tools. After 10 a.m., I'll add in a little bit more price tools, but they're both equally valuable, but they're measuring two different things. One's price-based, the slow stochastic that I share with you all, and the other's volume-based, the V-score that I created out of desperation in 2008. All right. Thank you for the question. NQ. Hey there, Peter. How are you? What's up with the NQ? I don't want to get long the NQ. 
Uh, what I want to do is follow the trend. What do we have here? Bearish momentum, bearish trend. So this is when I say something like this is red over red. This is a downtrend, gang. Uh, if I have eight to 10 grab candles in a row, that's definitely a heads up. That's a warning. And then by the time the 8, 13, 21, and 34 EMAs are aligned, that's a downtrend, gang. And we color code everything because, well, I like to color code everything. So now this is short the rip. We, we know what buy the dip is. We've been doing that for years. Now this, for me, is short the rip. And it's, it's short the rip uh, even more so because of what's going on with ZN. You know, what do we know after, after yesterday's FOMC meeting? Look, I want to keep shorting the rip on ZN. I believe we're going to continue to see, and I know a lot of you feel the same way, we're going to see uh, rates continue to move higher. And that's a great downtrend. So we have this macroeconomic trend and we have this technical trend that are meshing, that are dovetailing. And that's exactly where we want to be as, as traders. So I won't say the same thing about the S&P. And frankly, I won't say the same thing about the Dow. But when the broader averages are in chop, and you can see here, that's chop, yellow reading on this particular trade flag. When that happens, it makes a whole lot more sense to ask yourself, well, can we get to some sector clarity? What do I mean sector clarity? When the indices are in chop, we're probably going to start to see a lot of very clear relative performance to the upside, outperformance, and to the downside. So I think in chop, it makes a whole lot more sense to think less about the indices, unless, of course, you're day trading, which is great, uh, and more about the individual sector. So thank you. Thank you for that question. All right. Next up is FXY. Brian, thanks for the currency conversation. All right. So what do we know about, let's start with sort of the touchstone for the yen, which would either be the 6J or the dollar yen, right? Now, remember when we're trading yen, we're trading any currency. It doesn't have to be against the US dollar unless you're trading futures or want to trade an ETF, in which case that's really your only viable liquid uh, choice. But in the, uh, in the Forex, completely different conversation. We can pair yen up with almost anything. So that being said, is FXY a good sell the rip? Well, I would want to be bearish on the, on the uh, six, uh, sorry, I want to be bearish in a red environment. Um, so this is actually neutral at the moment, which is fine. What I'll do is I'll look back to see what was the dominant color of the grab, which stands for green, red, and blue. What was the dominant color of the grab candles? Well, it was red. We have a downtrend here. So when we are in chop, like we are right now, and then take a look. Here's your Darvis automated, Darvis automated. Gang, I'll tell you what, regardless of what kind of current setup, layout, strategy you're using, the automated Darvis 2.0, which, oh my gosh, it's free over at Countdown. Not because it's not valuable, but because back in 26, 2017, I thought, you know what, this could help traders, period, period. And, and we knew that this kind of objective support and resistance speeds up the learning curve. You know, the more you can automate based on a process, anything that you put on your chart, you're going to speed up your learning curve. So, you know, this is kind of where I'm heading into this part of my career. How can I automate the tools that I did manually for two to three decades prior? And, you know, this is one of those things that's going to be a needle mover. So if we're going to sell the rip, I really need a trend. So Brian, not a sell the rip, but I get the gist of what you're saying. Can we short this thing? Well, take a look right here. Now, this is a choppy market. Choppy markets do what? They validate an oscillator like the slow stochastic. So I've got my resistance here. I've got my signal here. Yeah, I think you're in good shape for a short. I think you're in really good shape for a short. However, you know, this is where I would say this is this is really a relationship between dollar and yen. So you want to see the dollar continue to strengthen in this relationship. It's not just a yen weakness, but it's dollar strength. And if the equity markets start to roll over and head lower, yen will strengthen too. So be careful with that. I'm a little bit more a fan of the 6E right now 
because I'd like to buy dollars. I'd like to be in a long dollar, bullish dollar position. We've talked a lot about that. And what's happening today with the euro, that's, I would really keep an eye on the 6E or the FXE because this is a pure US dollar long setup. All right. Thank you for the currency question. Love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. Moving on to the next question. All right. Can we take a look at F and absolutely PM? Sure. Let's start with Ford. Okay. So with Ford, this had a great run. And I, and I know a lot of folks in the uh, simpler community took advantage of this. Look at this here. Look at all the green grab candles. Right around eight to 10 in a row in this area, you're already thinking bullish. Not that it's going to have this kind of move, but you sure don't want to short it. And then on the dips, a lot of you know, double green or green momentum, green trend, bullish momentum, bullish trend, bullish candles. That's what those green grab candles are telling you. You know, you buy, you buy the dips. This is not the same environment, is it? However, the preceding trend was up. So I still carry uh, into any setup that I want to look at. I still carry that little bit of bullishness, right? Let the previous trend dictate your bias. We may not have a trend any longer, but we did have the previous uptrend. So this is where I would be calling this. This is bullish, but it's also neutral. Bullish to neutral, right? Choppy market, but we want to buy oversold support. Darvis steps in and says, here's your oversold support starting around 1918. So call it 1920 and extending all the way down to about 19, uh, 1860. That's your oversold zone. And then what do you want to do? Once we have now, the only time you want to consult the slow stochastic is when this is yellow, when the trend is neutral. And then now we can say, all right, here was the oversold. And then now here we are at the 20. Don't wait for the arrow. You don't have to. Once we get down to the 20, we are in the, uh, sorry, that's overbought up here. That's overbought. And now after the move lower, this is oversold. We're entering that oversold zone. We're entering the zone of the Darvis. That's a viable area. And that's a fade. And uh, as I saw my uh, a buddy of mine on uh, Twitter, say this morning, I retweeted it. So if you all follow me on Twitter, you'll see I retweeted it. And uh, I loved what he said, because sometimes it makes sense to fade. And there it is. If you ain't fading, you ain't trading. And sometimes the fade, meaning you're going to buy into weakness, depending upon the market structure, and you're going to sell into resistance, that buy into support, that buy as the market's sinking, bearish momentum, but in an overall neutral environment, that's your key. Philip Morris, beautiful trend. Uh, yesterday in the Sector Secrets Mastery, we started getting into quite a bit of these XLPs. I love, 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 love where you're looking. You know, this is, I talked about this particular layout of mine. This is the absolute best and simplest way to set up a relative outperformance, an outperforming scan of what could be uh, where you want to focus. And there it is right there, Jalen. Great bullish momentum, bullish trend. This is where the individual, this is what I call a boat. Okay. The individual boat is looking even better than the tide. And sometimes it makes sense to go at the individual boat level. Like you mentioned there in Philip Morris versus the tide. And it has everything to do with structure. And notice we just color code the structure, color code the candles, color code the labels. It's harder to argue with sort of the traffic light approach to analysis. All right, next up. Yeah, question on GC, and then I'm going to wrap it up there. And thank you for asking the question on GC, Jimmy. Appreciate that. And what I what I mentioned in GC was an aggressive setup. And I said, and I said, look, I want to be buying the March calls, but only if we get either a minor low pattern right? A minor low or an inside candle. Well, this is not an inside candle because we've taken out the low. So we have a pretty big minor low setting up now. So let me give you a quick follow-up on how we, I'm going to treat this. 
If we keep selling off, absolutely. I'll look to this Darvis down in here and I'll look for an oversold signal on a ready game fire or on the slow stochastic. Awesome. As long as we're still neutral, as you can see there on the trend. Okay. If we sink down there, easy peasy conservative setup. In the meanwhile, we've got to wait for the minor low to complete. That means keep an eye on yesterday's high. We have to wait for the pattern to complete. So this is not, it's a little bit more rangy than I would have liked, but the pattern is still possibly a minor low pattern. So we'll keep an eye on it. That means the earliest you'll have the buy set up for gold is tomorrow. All right, is tomorrow. So follow up on yesterday's free video. Thank you for that question, Jimmy. Great question. And just like that, our charts and coffee show is over. Someone said we need to do charts and coffee uh, after the close, although they called it trades and tequila. I don't know about that one, <laughs> but a lot of requests for, for something after the close. I don't know. It's 2022. We'll see, we'll see about that, but keep an eye on that one going into tomorrow. All right, my friends, be good to each other. I'll see you here. Same time, same station.